What's up YouTube? In my last video I mentioned that I picked up a Mac Mini, but I wasn't really pleased with the performance. I tried using it, but it was a bit slow, so I decided to upgrade it with an SSD. But you gotta be careful, if you get the ones with the SSD, they're pretty much a pain to upgrade. This particular model is a late 2014. I bought it used off of eBay with 10% eBay bucks. So it was roughly 460 with $46 off with 2% kickback. So just about $400 for, a, for the Mac Mini. I also picked up this one terabyte Samsung 850 Evo SSD solid state drive because the one that comes with the Mac is really slow. It's a 5400 uh, SATA drive that's just terribly slow. One of the first things I do once I get the machine was reformat it and reinstall the operating system so that there's nothing on the machine. And of course, Apple being Apple, they don't use anything that's standard. So I originally tried using a Torque T06 and a T08, but it turns out that they require this special tool that has a little pinhole in the, the Torx screw to make it a security feature. So I had to buy this for eight bucks just to take off this cover and it's only a single use. So one of the reasons why I decided to pick up this Mac mini was to do a few things. First, I wanted to make a media center, which doesn't require too much processing power and doesn't, I don't want it to take up a lot of power in general. The Mac mini is one of the most efficient mini machines out there or micro PCs. So I decided to do this instead of build a custom rig just because uh, they, if you take care of an Apple product, they'll last a long time. Of course, if it breaks, that means it's broken and it's really expensive to fix too. So that's also a problem when you do this. So one of the first things we were doing is removing the dust cover and then the antenna. When you take off that initial cover, there's an antenna wire that you have to be careful because it's screwed down. So you don't want to pull it too hard. If you're going along with this video, I'm going to speed things up at certain spots. But always use that as a reference. I used another video, but this was the first time I even touched a Mac Mini and opened it up. And it should take you no longer than an hour at max. And that's including with the hard drive cloning. So when you start, just make sure you have all the right tools available. You're going to need two torque wrenches, one with a security feature, and then one uh, a size up for the hard drive to remove the, the, the casing on it. It also works well to remove different connectors on Apple products. And right now we're removing the fan and the fan being the most common part to fail on most computers. So always get an extra if you can afford it. Actually, if you're familiar with iPhones and taking them apart, then you'll probably be used to working with such small screws and wires and cables. So you have to be careful and don't want to tug anything too hard because it's almost impossible to replace anything with Apple products. But one of the best thing about Apple products is that they're easy to use and they always just work. So even though the hardware is a little bit difficult to work with, it's always pretty convenient from a usability perspective. And you know, it's not that bad working on it if you're familiar with it. It's just foreign if you're just used to PCs and just pulling plug and play. So you'll notice that I'm using this plastic tool a lot and that's just to lift certain cables without damaging the board or the pins because you have to be very careful with damaging pins. When working with a Mac, just remember don't pull anything really hard. Just kind of always look around to see if there's any small screw or a little cable that's connected that you should disconnect before pulling everything out. As you can see on this Mac Mini, the RAM, the memory, that piece in the middle, is actually soldered onto the board, so you can't upgrade the RAM with these. So it's, it's kind of a pain. This is one of the reasons why PCs are a lot nicer, but it's also one of the reasons why the Mac Mini is really efficient. In older Mac Minis, that's not the case, though. You can upgrade the RAM and the, the hard drive like normal, normal computers, but it's only the 2014 that has a special design. So you can see that after removing the motherboard, I'm moving on to the power next. I remove the, there's a little pin or a latch that held onto it. There's also a screw, but it comes out, it's a nice little power block, and then all that's left is the hard drive. Now after all that work, just to get to the friggin' hard drive. Normally, in a regular PC, it's 10 times easier, but of course with Apple, anything Apple, everything has to be difficult. 
That's not entirely true because their UI and UX is really simplified these days and one of the best when it comes to how to use products intuitively. So it's a little bit of a give and take. Their software is a lot easier to use than their hardware. So one of the reasons why I'm using a one terabyte SSD is because I'm going to use it to run some Bitcoin nodes. Uh, I'm going to run several nodes actually for cryptocurrencies and I didn't want to use my main computer because of the wattage draw and these Mac minis tend to do pretty well on power power draw and SSDs take even less power than the disk counterpart and with a 5400 RPM disk versus a SSD there's really no comparison even the SSD is a bit thinner and it's a bit lighter so by replacing the hard disk with an SSD, it removes one other area that generates heat and the only other moving part other than the fan. Because Apple never uses standard parts, everything is proprietary Apple, you always have to reuse what they have. And in this case, it's a little bit of a, it's a little sticker for the SATA cable. And we'll just connect that on to the Samsung SSD and put the tape right back on. So when you have everything open and out on the table like this, it makes for a good time to give it a blast of compressed air and then just clean all the different parts on the computer, on the motherboard, on the different vents, just to clear it out. And if you have a laptop, just to give you an idea of how much weight you save just by changing the hard drive, I, it, it might not seem like much, but there is a difference. The 2.5 inch SATA platter that's a regular disc is 106 grams and the SSD counterpart is half that less than half that at 40 just about just under 50 grams this works especially well for laptops because it increases the battery life too because of the lower power draw and lower heat so SSDs are just a great way to improve your computer experience and later on you'll see how I end up cloning the disk it's actually very easy what you see me removing from the old hard drive and putting on the new one are some foam pads and that's to help with anti-vibration but now I don't think it's as necessary but I'm still gonna put it on there just because it was there to begin with and the SSD is actually thinner so just to give it some space I went with the Samsung drive just because it's one of the more reliable drives. I have it on my main computer in the 256 and the 512. I've had them for years with no problems. So once you find a product that works, I, I generally tend to stick with it. Now this one's a one terabyte. If you didn't see it in the beginning, this is a Samsung Evo 850. It's not the Pro. Some of the other ones that I have are the 840 and the 850. So they're, they're fast drives. One of the main purposes of this computer is, once again, it's going to be a media hub slash virtual machine for my wallet. So there's not going to be a lot of personal access to it. It's just going to be remote access. It's headless. So unless you know the IP, it's going to be fairly secure and good for cryptocurrency uh, to hide certain wallets on there. I'll describe that in another video, but it's only one step in the, the entire plan of how to manage and keep your cryptocurrency safe in different layers of security. Reassembly is a lot easier. You just have to remember where all the screws go, which is pretty handy when you have a video or a picture of what you were doing. So I did reference this at one point just to make sure I knew what I was doing and remember where everything went. So. I did do a couple of takes on these, but overall it's fairly straightforward. It's just everything is tiny. If you find your computer is slow and lagging, then definitely just look at an SSD to, as an upgrade as opposed to getting a new computer. These days you don't really need a new computer for anything other than specialty applications. An old computer from 2014 fifth through now can handle the majority of what we need to do other than film editing and very specialty tasks like gaming. Other than the SSD to improve the speed, there you can always upgrade the RAM except on models like this, or you can clear out your operating system and start from scratch, which you should do just to make sure your backups are working. So always 
back your stuff up and restore it from time to time just to make sure that everything works the way you think it should. One of the benefits of running an SSD is that once you get that extra boost of power, you can afford to encrypt everything on your drive so that in case something does get stolen, it's encrypted and everything is safe on there. But for this one, it's not really going to matter. I'm only going to encrypt a few things. The main purpose for this machine is as a cryptocurrency full node and a media center slash printer hub. I can also use it as a server for pretty much any application that I'm looking to build. It's a pretty nifty unit that doesn't take a lot of juice. So it's very low cost to operate and very affordable. Now, the hard drive wasn't as affordable. It almost cost as much as the Mac mini, but for me, it's worth it because I, I really don't like to wait for anything. And also I use some profits from crypto to get a machine dedicated for crypto so I don't have to use my laptop for running a full node for Ethereum or Bitcoin, which draws a lot of juice and it makes it constantly makes my laptop hot. In another video, I'm going to show you how to use the Mac mini or just a separate machine that's dedicated for crypto in your overall strategy, because it does matter once you start having a larger amount and you want to keep it safe or you don't want to maintain your privacy. So now it's just reinstalling the fan one more time. It's just the last piece before we get everything all together and then nice and cleaned up so that uh, we can put everything back and get try to boot up the machine. So I didn't clone the drive just yet. I'm going to show you how I did that. I used the built-in disk utility and a external drive to, to do it. And also make sure that you clean your workspace. Once everything is nice and tied down, just make sure everything is snug, not too tight. From there, it's pretty much just wrapping it up and making sure that everything works once you're done. The fan should work, the computer should work, and nothing should get too hot. We'll put back on the antenna. You can see the little Wi-Fi sticker. This one was probably the hardest thing to put back on because the, the wire is just so tiny. It uses the same one as the iPhone if you've ever worked on that. It's really tiny. If you have bigger hands, <laughs> good luck. I do have to say this was one of the funner projects I've done in a while. I, I really enjoy this. I did this when I was young. And this was actually what got me into computers. I would always take computers apart, ones that I found on the street or at the office I was working at. And actually, that's how I got started. I used to work on the line, uh, putting clothes in boxes in a factory. And when the systems would go down, I would undo the wiring and then rewire it until it worked and find issues with uh, the thin clients. One of the managers noticed that I was fixing some issues and befriending some of the support guys, and that's how I got my start in the career of tech. But yeah, so this is one of those uh, pastimes for me, and it's really therapeutic. It's kind of fun just uh, sitting down and messing, opening up a computer and refurbishing it. So as you can see, it doesn't really take that long. It's only a few screws, maybe like 20 screws total, and you just got to go in a certain order and it's actually not that bad. Once you get used to it, I can probably do it now, now that I've done it in probably 15 minutes and then another 15 minutes to clone the drive. And now that that's done, we just put on the dust cover and it's pretty much all set to get checked out. So now we just look at it and make sure no scuffs, no scrapes. Can't even tell I opened it up and worked on it. So now we're gonna boot it up and I'll show you side by side what it looks like from when before and after so you can see that the one on the left is really slow and the one on the right is the ssd to clone the drive all you have to do is use one of those usb enclosures and hook it up to the imac with the disc and from there you just open up the disc utility on boot up and do a restore on the new drive with the source the destination as the new drive and the source as the old drive and that's pretty much it once you you're done unplug it and reboot so thank you everyone for watching if you like please comment like and subscribe and i'll catch you on the next one